Here's a tip I'd like to share with you, and I actually got it from a viewer. They were watching a video, one of the videos I did on Dowling, I believe, and they had uh, brought up a good point that I'd share it with you. Now, here's an example of dowels that get drilled into a concrete foundation. You can see the dowel here and then a piece of rebar tying to it. Let's take a look at a few more pictures. Here they are connected going all the way across. Uh, we have a house here and a detached garage. We went ahead and built a room addition in here. And here's the dowel, a piece of rebar, half inch I would imagine. You drill a hole into the concrete, put some epoxy in, slide one of these babies in, and you have a dowel, a ready, ready a connection for um, something that's going to give you some structural strength for a concrete slab, mainly like a room addition. This wouldn't be something you would see in new construction, hopefully. Here it is again. Here's what it would look like finished. Here we have the dowels going across. Now what I'd like to talk about is a different way to do it. Now here is the way that I had in the pictures we just looked at. We had a dowel going into the concrete, a piece of rebar tied to it, and a piece of rebar going into the other foundation. So we had a continuous piece of rebar here and two separate dowels. Now this right here would provide us with a better method. I would imagine would provide us with a better connection. This would be taking a full length piece of rebar and then doweling it into the concrete slab and then attaching it to a dowel that is installed into the other concrete slab. It would basically eliminate one of these connections. Now, this is a great idea and uh, I've actually done it before, but I've had some problems. First thing I'd like to point out is that when you install a small dowel, you usually have a lot more control over it. You knock it in, you uh, have the dowel in, and it usually um, isn't going to move. And remember, this stuff cannot move. So if you use a long piece of rebar for something like this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put some 2x4s or something underneath these areas, something to lay the rebar on while, it's, while the epoxy is setting. You will need to set the rebar in place and it cannot move. Problem I ran into when I did this once was that I kept on, uh, I, you know, I would put the rebar in and um, it sagged down. I didn't have board supporting it. And um, I kicked a couple of them a few times. I mean, if you could just imagine you're trying to walk over this stuff, you know, while you're doing your, while you're uh, putting the other epoxy, epoxy and the rest of the rebar in. And uh, um, it would move. So that's not a good thing. So be careful if you are going to use this method right here. And it is actually a method I would use again um, just now that I know not what not to do kind of a thing. Now here's what the individual who got me thinking about this suggested and I love this idea. He suggested alternating the rebar, and this is a great idea, and I would imagine this, this, this could be, I'm not saying it will be, something that if you're a structural engineer, you might like this idea and start, to start using it. And uh, again, I thought it was a fantastic idea. Have one full length piece of rebar going into the concrete slab on one side and then have it alternate on the other side going into the slab here and this is going to provide us with a nice connection to the slab we've got the dowel here we don't have a weaker connection here but it's alternating instead of putting them all in on one side and having a nice strong connection on one side and a weaker connection on the other side something like this would create a a little stronger connection and again i'm no engineer i just uh, know a pretty good idea when i see it and this seems like a great idea